Yay. All right, uh, view, that works. If you're wondering what that like splashy sound is in the back, our cat has a um, fountain for his water and looks like a faucet and he's drinking from it. So it sounds like um, splashing. So it splashes whenever he takes a drink from it if, and it's right next to my headset. So, <laughs> all right. Um, so last week we talked about general probability. Uh, this week we are talking about um, discrete probabilities. So um, I want to share my screen. I'm going to just... So it doesn't put it in any particular order, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's funny. Uh, we use Zoom at the high school, and it puts people in alphabetical order by their first name. And of course, everything else I have is in there by their last name. So it's really, really, really annoying. <laughs> You know, like trying to get into, um, you know, when I'm doing it, uh, I, that's always fun too. When I'm, stop eating paper. Uh, when I'm doing a, uh, uh, when I'm taking attendance, I'm like, or grades, I have to like look at their first names and then figure out what they'll find their last names. And so it's, it, it's kind of funny. Um, all right, so let's bring this stuff back. All right, so um, so this week we are talking. Oh, I just want to quit that. Uh, this is what I want to declare. So this week we are talking about uh, discrete probabilities. So discrete values are countable values. Um, uh, you know, when we talk about them, it, it's going to be whole numbers. Um, it could be negative. Um, but you no, actually, I don't think it could be even negative. It's just counting numbers, so it's really just the natural numbers. Um, a whole number that you have to put zero in there. Um, but you can talk about averages. So, like when they talk about the average uh, number of kids in a family, it's 2.3. Um, that doesn't mean there's a third of a kid somewhere. It just means that when we average them out, that's what we get. Um, but the window's closed. Uh, when we, um, but it has to be countable. So TVs, you know, how many TVs do you have? A broken TV is either a TV or it's not a TV. You don't say, well, I have kind of a TV. Um, you know, they have to be, you're, they're either, it's either there or it isn't. Um, and then we're going to start looking at binomial distributions, which is uh, success or failure. Um, and um, so, we don't care what the success is. It, the success doesn't have to mean um, that it succeeded, like, and failure isn't a bad thing. It just means that it's not what we were looking for. So um, if it's a, uh, you know, they're, they're looking for how many boys there are in a class, you know, it's just, we just look at the males, you know, um, so you're either male or you're not. You know, there's no in between, there's no gray. There's, it's, you either are or you aren't. It's either you pay taxes or you didn't. It's either you um, work full time or you don't. So even whatever the thing is that they're looking for, it's that or, and everything else, you know, is not, is, is considered failure. And you have to decide where you fall. So like in those areas where it's full time, it's like, well, is 27 hours full time? I mean, it just depends upon the company. You know, you have to say, well, they're going to tell you if you're full time, whether you're working, you know, 40 hours or not, or 37 and a half hours or not. So they're like, oh, 30 hours is full time. If you make 28 hours, you're not full time. You're really close, but, you know, they're, in their eyes, it's not full time. So you have to look, and it's one or the other, and that's it. Um, the other thing that they're going to look at is, um, expected value. Now expected value comes along uh, useful when you are, um, I mean, the first question here is is um, uh, buying a raffle tickets. So you either win or you don't. You know, again, there's no gray area in that. Um, the problem used to be wrong all the time because they forgot to put in the um, 
the value of buying the ticket. So they're like, oh well, you the you know what the prize you win is $150, but it really wasn't. You had to pay the money to buy the tickets. So um, those things are important. What, what was that site that I had that? Um, did I save it here? Or oh, was it at school? I don't remember now. Um, no, I think it was here. I think it was a. Um, of course, I don't think I saved it. No, that wasn't what I was looking for. I think I would have bookmarked it so that way I could just click. That wasn't, I didn't have to even make an account. It was just a thing. It was just already there. Um, explain everything. No, I didn't have to pay for it. I didn't have to click on anything. Of course, now that I... Uh, mm. I can never be smart and save the things that I really am looking for. Um, that would have been a good idea to save it. All right. Um, I think it was this. Nope, not either. I, mean, I probably could have just clicked on it, but... Uh, All right, I'm not going to worry about it right now. All right, so um, where was I? I think it was the AWE app. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you're right, it was. Thank you. I'm like, why can't I ever remember these things? Why didn't I bookmark it? I'm bookmarking it right now. Uh, bookmark. <laughs> I'm going to put it in uh, MCC online whiteboard. That's all I care about. Done. All right. So just in case I need it for later. So um, thanks. I missed you too. So in this problem here, uh, we have um, 100 tickets for sale at $3 a piece, and we buy four of them. So um, that was really bad. All right, all right, Nugget, I can't do It's bad enough drawing with a mouse. Let's not have you in my face. Okay. So there's three things, there's two things that can happen. We can win and we can lose. All right, so if we win, we get um, two shows to a Broadway, two passes to a Broadway show worth $150, okay? But we bought four tickets, okay? So the four tickets cost us three bucks a piece, so they cost us $12. So we have to look at the value of winning is 150 
minus 12. And then losing is just minus 12. Okay, because we're not getting a. So this one here, people, um, something is wrong with my connection enabled to C. Um, you can lo try logging back in and logging back out, uh, Sasha. I not sh like so. Can other people see this? It's just the like a really bad drawing of some lines and a, uh, a text. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So. Uh, Sasha, I would try logging back in and logging back in. And like I said, this is being recorded, so if you know, if all else fails, listen. Um, thanks. <laughs> uh, you can at least listen, and then because it looks like you're on your phone, and then you can always watch the video. Um, so try that. All right. So this is the value. And then we have to deal with the probability of that value occurring. So if we've bought four tickets out of 100, we have a four in 100 chance of winning. OK, we're going to call this x. And so this is the probability of x. All right. So the probability of losing is anything else. So if they pick any other ticket, we have a 96 in 100 chance of losing. All right. And then to get our expected value, we multiply these things together and then add them up. will be this number right here, OK? So and they write this as, um, you might see it, as, I think it's x times p of x. So we're just multiplying those two things together. So this is 138, if I do my math right. And so. 138 times 4 divided by 100, we get 552. And then this losing $12, which you know not winning the 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 uh, raffle, is negative 12 because we're going to lose $12, and it happens 96% of the time. And so negative 11.52. And so our expected value is just the addition of these two things happening. So we're expected to lose $6 if we do this all the time, over and over and over again. OK, and so we should, like in the long run, not keep buying uh, raffle tickets for this thing. But, you know, we might just because, you know, it's a cause we care about. So there's, there's other factors, but, you know, it's a losing proposition. All right. And that's what they, they're, they're asking us about here is, you know, what is the interest? What are we interested in? The amount of winnings. So winning the ticket. We're going to call it x, and x is the amount of the winnings because that's what we're interested in. What are the values? So we can either lose $12 or win $138. All right. And I want to make this a little bigger so you can think about it. Um, uh, how many of you have heard of, you know, like, so this is 150 and what we're going to go into, you know, place bets that you should make. Um, so, uh, you know, that's this. What is the table? So they have us set up the table. And what is the expected value? So those are the things that we calculated by doing this, this table. All right. So let's change it a little bit. Um, 
how many of you have heard of Hamilton? The the musical. Yeah, it's fantastic. So you, we now get to see it on Disney Plus, right? Um, but at one point in time, uh, has anybody gone to Hamilton? I'm hoping Stephanie, have you gone or? Does anybody know how much tickets for Hamilton cost? <laughs> yes, lots. Um, at, at one point, yes. Um, so when they were coming to Boston, it wasn't even the original show. The tickets hadn't even gone on sale yet and they were already being sold on StubHub for $1,000 a ticket. Um, tickets really only cost like 60 bucks, you know, to 100 to like $300 like in New York. Um, but those seats then sell for 10, 20 times what they're cost. So you you may spend anywhere between $1,500 and $4,000 for a ticket for Hamilton in New, in New York when during the original run, uh, when Lin Manuel was there and uh, the rest of the cast. Um, and the cool thing was, so because they were so expensive, what they did was they held a lottery themselves for front row seats they had 20 front row seats you had to if the winners there were 10 winners you got two of them they were 10 bucks a piece and so but you had to be there and they would do stuff before the show and then draw people from whoever put in their names and those 10 people 10 groups would get 20 tickets for 20 dollars so you couldn't then resell them you had to uh Yes, for limited use, <laughs> exactly. Um, so they're very expensive. So you had this, you know, so it became a massive thing. And because it was so popular, other theaters were like, hey, maybe we should do this. So like they, and they would put on shows beforehand. They would have somebody come out and do all kinds of crazy stuff. They would have Lin-Manuel juggle and they'd have them sing songs from each other's songs and they'd have them sing songs from different plays. They'd have other actors from other shows come and do their songs. So they just made a big thing about it. And it became this big deal because tickets were so crazily expensive. Hi, Sean. Hello. <laughs> so, um, but, so if we were to do this again, and here, I'm going to erase some of this. And say we're getting tickle tickets for Hamilton. All right, and and they were donated, so they didn't really cost um, the. They were, you know, so they were donated by somebody. So it didn't cost the, the school anything. So Middlesex is having a, a the Middlesex Theater is having a a, 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 um, a, a raffle, and they're gonna sell a hundred tickets at oh twenty bucks a piece, uh, fifty bucks a piece. I guess we'll say 50 bucks a piece, but you're going to get two tickets to Hamilton. So two tickets to Hamilton can be, you know, $1,500. Right. And you buy, what did I say? 50 bucks a piece. And so they're kind of expensive. So you really only buy one ticket. Or maybe you buy two tickets just because you know you have a hundred bucks and uh, Sean's Sean's feeling generous. He, he's like he he bought a hundred bucks. <laughs> you know, and he he decides to, he's like he's gonna buy his favorite statistics teacher uh, two tickets to this. All right. So I have two chances of winning. And I have 98 chances of losing. All right. So from here, I can still do the same thing and find out my um, my expected value. 
And what we can do is we can figure out where does it tip. There's always a point where it tips that it goes from your chance where this here, your chance of winning out shines your chance of losing. And we can then go, oh, whenever we're so whenever we're doing a, a raffle of a s small amount of tickets, like um, every year we go up to uh, York Beach and they raffle off a car, you know, and they sell 500 tickets at. Five hundred dollars a piece, you know. But the car, like one year was a Mercedes, another year was a Harley Davidson, you know. Another year, so it, the car is always worth more, far more than it's always donated, but it's always worth a lot more than if you bought all of the tickets. So technically, if you bought all the tickets, you'd have a, you'd win, you'd have a perfect chance of winning, and you'd come out ahead <laughs> still because you'd still have a fifty thousand dollar car that you paid twenty five thousand dollars for. You know, so you know, you can play the odds to your favor, you know, and that's what we're gonna look at here is where would that occur? So this is fourteen hundred as I'm trying to make my math easy. So I have fourteen hundred dollars times two percent. is 28. And this one obviously is negative 98. So in this case, we would lose $70. Well, I could graph this, okay, and see where this happens. So I can look and see that this is um, really the value minus um, how much each thing is times its percent. And this percent and this value are kind of related, right? So if I erase some things, I'll erase this. So this is really um, x to 50x, because that's how much they were. And this is also, this is just x. And when I multiplied them, I got, uh, 1500 minus 50x times x over 100, where x is just the number of tickets that you buy. All right? And this here is also 50x. And this is um, 100 minus x. And so when I multiply these, I have negative 50x times 100 minus x over 100. And then this would be just the, these two things added together. Well, I could graph this and find out, well, where does that point hit when I get to this? And do I start actually start making money? Does this thing start becoming positive? I could look for that graph. You know, because obviously this is going to go from 0 to 100. I could, I could make a graph and see, well, when does this number become positive? And that would tell me how many tickets I should actually buy because my chance, my expected value goes from being negative to being positive. And um, yes, it's maybe a large outlay of money, but your chances of winning are that much better. And therefore you can say, well, I, if I did this over and over again, I would expect to now break even, or I would expect to, you know, make money on these because if I bought these tickets, at, you know, 15, if I won these $1,500 tickets and I only had to pay, um, $700 for them, well, I could sell them for a thousand dollars and still come out ahead. 
because I've already my and that's that's what you would look to do is how could you do this? But you would you could actually combine these things and find out where they're. So if I could did, did out this multiplication, I would get um, all my uh, values here, and I'm not going to actually do that. But it it actually using the math would allow you to to determine that number. Where does the break even point occur, and so wherefore does your chances of happening become positive? Now, it seems simple, silly for this. You know, okay, I'm buying a lot of um, raffle tickets, but uh, what happened is, um, how many of you played the lottery? Like, when the lottery gets to us, like, Powerball, when the, when the power, when Powerball is over $500 million, how many of you buy a ticket? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's two bucks. You're like, well, my chances of winning are, are tiny, but it's two bucks. And if I win, I'm going to get $500 million or however, you, if you get in a lump sum, $280 million or something like that. So it's really worth it. And... Um, what happened was at one point there was this game in Michigan and also in Massachusetts um, because Massachusetts is dumb that uh, happened in Michigan and then Massachusetts said oh there was this really good game that uh, people were playing and it seemed to turn out okay so why don't we start running it and so they also ran it and what happened was is that after it there were no winners um, it actually became more profitable to play the game. So people would buy the, these two, this family, this, this husband and wife, uh, figured this out, and they went with. Um, they had a few other people who they got involved and said, "Hey, listen, if we spend, um, I think it was fifty thousand. They bought fifty thousand tickets." At a dollar a piece, but their expected value on those fifty, because like it was just not only the winnings, they didn't really want the win to win the the big prize. Because what happened was all of the other prizes doubled, and so because of that, the expected value when you when that when the prizes doubled became positive, and so they said if we buy a hundred thousand tickets, our expected value on those that hundred thousand dollar ticket is a hundred and fifty thousand dollars so they would buy tons of tickets <laughs> and it, they did this only when it got to the certain point where the 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 the, the, the prices doubled they would go out and buy another hundred thousand tickets and yeah they didn't win it all the time but over the long run they actually were making money and then Massachusetts did the same thing. And they were like, hey, something's wrong with this game. It must be rigged because they were noticing that there would be spikes where all of a sudden they were losing money on this game. And what happened was not only had this couple figured it out, but MIT students had figured it out. And so when it came to Massachusetts, they played the same game what, waiting for the time, the point where the expected value became positive and would then buy lots of tickets and they were making money and they were like, they're like no the game's not rigged it's just you know bad it's just bad probability you 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 you've made it so that it's profitable which is one thing that um should not happen when you're gambling is that the house should not lose i can't remember the game but it was a, i watched the video on it it was quite intriguing to me um but that's where it's the idea of expected value becomes very useful is looking at the lottery or looking at any other gambling. So if you were playing roulette, you know, how many numbers should you, how many different bets should you make before you start becoming profitable? And you'll find that there are like, it's your break. You're really not necessarily become profitable, but break even, you know, because if you have a roulette wheel, Always bet black. Well, that's the thing. Um, there's th on, in the U.S. roulette wheel. There's 38 numbers. All right. There's one through 36, and then there's zero, zero, and zero. And these two are green. <laughs> 
And can I change the color? That's thickness, color. These two. are green. In uh, Europe, there's just zero, you know, but like they realized, uh, although I think they've gone out of the zero zero because they realized that, hey, you know, Vegas is winning lots of money. So they may have gone to the, the, the 38 uh, value, 38 numbers um, instead of the, just the 36, but um, yeah, that's better. But um, you know, I don't recall. I haven't been to a casino in Europe. So, um, but at one point uh, in Monaco, I was going to say Morocco, and I knew that was wrong because uh, they don't like gambling. Um, in Morocco, in in uh, um, one of the casinos there, the color red came out 26 times in a row. Now, the chance of that happening is approximately, because we're going to just assume it's, you know, the, it, there's red or black. We're going to just ignore the, the green because it's not quite 50-50. It's, um, so I mean, it's 18 divided by 37. So this is the chance of getting red one time. And every roll is independent. So that's the nice thing about um, binomial distribution is that everything is independent of each other. So the chance of this happening 26 times in a row is, wish I had my calculator so I could see. Where is... Oh, there it is. I don't. I don't need a carrot. I don't need a carrot. Is this? So that is zero point one two three four five six. Was it nine? Yeah. Seven, eight, nine. That. So. Tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions, hundred millions, billions, ten seven ten billions. So seven times out of ten billion attempts, this is going to happen. Getting red twenty six times in a row. So the chances of it happening are infinitesimally small. They're not zero, but they're pretty close, All right? Um, and it's, I guess, 73 times out of 100 billion options. So um, that means that if le that, that, that's less than you um, being here, because like there's 7 billion people. So the chance of a UFO coming down and picking you up is more likely than the chance of getting uh, 26 reds in a row on a roulette wheel in Monte Carlo. That's what I was trying to think of, the starting to say. Right. Um, and so that's pretty rare, okay? I mean, yes, we realize that UFOs probably aren't gonna pick anybody up, but you know, um, apparently they do, because you know, we still have crazy people who, who say they've been abducted by aliens, um, but, the, the the chances of these things occurring are infinitesimal. Now the thing is, they happen. Okay, just like picking out the lottery numbers, the chances of it happening, of you actually getting that number, is like one in seventy three billion. It's not a, it's not likely. But it happens all the time. So while things are improbable, they are not impossible, okay? And we have to bet on the, uh, the improbability actually occurring, all right? And again, we could calculate the expected values of those things and figure out 
um, the chance of winning. But then you got to remember, it's not just winning the jackpot. Many tickets get thrown away that are, have won the second place prize or the third place prize. So there's, it, it, there, you'd be you'd be amazed how many people just go, oh, I didn't win. Nobody won the, the big number, and they take their ticket and they throw it away without checking the numbers. So they may have thrown away a million dollars. So if you ever played the lottery when it's a big prize, make sure you check the numbers. Okay. Um, so this one here is – so any questions on expected value? Because I think there's a couple more problems later on. Actually, I know there's a couple. There's this one here is a problem. Um, so this one here is just the PDF table. So they don't have to be just one option. This one has four options, and eventually we're going to get to this, which has six options. Okay, because you can buy rent a DVD. Uh, yes, people actually used to go to stores and rent DVDs. It was a place called Blockbuster. The last one just shut down this year. We were actually going to go to it until COVID hit. It was in um, Oregon. It was in Deschutes County, Oregon. And now they're renting it out. So you're going to have slumber parties. But it was uh, the local, the last blockbuster in the world. Um, and so that's where people, again, before you used to work at Blockbuster, we used to go all the time. We had the, um, they, they had that, uh, like when, when Netflix started, they would send out the, the, the DVDs and then Blockbuster said, oh, well, we, we can do that. So we would send out, the, we'd, we'd get, we had the package where we could get three DVDs. We would just, my kids would just rent them so we could go to the Blockbuster and return them. <laughs> like, they, they, they might not even watch the video, but they wanted to be able to go to Blockbuster because we could exchange them there for other rentals. So we always had, we, I don't know if we ever paid for a, a rental for, after a while. And because we were always from the Blockbuster here in town because we would get the, the one in the mail. They'd watch it once, or maybe we'd put it in. Sometimes we didn't even watch it, and they would just take it, and we'd go, can we return this to Blockbuster? And we'd go to Blockbuster and get the DVD there that they really wanted to watch, and we would watch that one. And then we would return it. And then we could get another one in the mail, because we had this giant queue of, of DVDs. And so... Uh, yeah, I know. Blockbuster was great. Uh, and for that, we had... VCRs, so I'm, <laughs> yeah, and, and you have to return the V. You have to, you have to re. Sean knows, remember, you have to rewind the 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 video, otherwise you got fined. Cause um, nothing worse than going to watch a movie and putting it in and getting your popcorn already, and you put it in and it's at the end of the movie and you're watching the credits. And you're, and like, you're like, I have to rewind this thing and it would take 15 minutes to rewind a video. Because you're like, ah, you know, you have to find the remote and, and hit the button and hope it works. And then you hear, you know. I don't know. I mean, maybe you bought a rewinder. Well, yeah, but you still had to, then you had to take it out of the VCR, put it in the rewinder and wait for it to rewind and then put it back in. It was a pain. Everybody hated it. So then they started charging you for um, uh, rewind fees. And, and the, there was a video, video store right across the street from me. It was right next to the, the sub shop and the uh, fish and chips place. So on Fridays, I'd get fish and chips and a steak sandwich and and, and Lost Boys. Like in <laughs> I watched Lost Boys way too many times. Um, they eventually gave me the video because I, I, I was the only one who would have rented it um, in months. And I rented it pretty much every other – almost for every Friday. Uh, well, I remember my daughter had um, the Iron Giant. Oh God, yeah. We yeah. had to buy three of them. Yep. Because she went through it. 
Well, that's it. It's like we would wear through these. My kids actually wore through their copies of Minecraft. They played it so much when when Minecraft first came out for the uh, Xbox, like in the PS4. I don't remember which one. We've had both. So, but they actually wore through the the, the game copies, the game console copy, game the console copies because they played it so many times. Um, but so anyway, so you can have more than one thing, but they still have to add up to one. Everything all, pr probabilities have to add up to one. So that's really all this is. And then they're asking you to multiply these two things together. So I'm not even going to bother doing that. And then what is the expected value? The expected value is just the sum of these x times p of x's. Same thing here with the DVDs. You know, what is the missing piece? What does the x stand for? They're just asking you um, what is the probability of the missing things. Um, we can have at least, at most. Just remember, at least means you know, at least three means three or more. At most, three means three or less. You know, more than three would be four and five. Less than three would be zero, one, and two. Okay, so you have to remember what does the variables mean? What do those words mean when you are adding them up? Okay, and, and that's all they're saying is that you can add those things up. So I'm going to skip that. Um, and now we're getting into problem four is um, binomial distribution. Does this one have a song? I don't remember. Oh, this one doesn't even have Poisson, but there's, um, which is weird. I got to find a problem because, um, hold on, I'm going to edit this and find some Poisson ones because there's Poisson on the, on the test. Oh, and there should be a test coming up uh, for chapters two and three soon. I don't remember when, but um, question browser. I want. So there's no test on question on uh, chapter one. No, because there's not any like good questions, good question. and it, it's kind of a useless chapter. So, four point six. Uh, I've got to find. Some on Poisson because there are some in the like I said there's some on the test so I just want to make sure you get some. Um, I didn't see this one either. Used to be on there. I'm gonna add that and. Because I basically I'd like to be able to say push off. That's binomial. That's binomial because that's already on there. That's binomial. That's binomial. That's binomial, 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 binomial. I know this question is coming in. OK. Uh, yeah, bonjour.
Oh, okay. So I'm glad you're answering each other's questions. So thank you. I appreciate that. Where he is? I'm back in the editor. Chinese New Year. Binomial. Oh, hold on. I wonder if I can find Control F. No, of course not. I think just written out as Poisson. Did I go back up to the top? I don't even know. Um, Binomial. <sighs> Any day now. Yeah, I have, uh, yeah, of course, it's not even on this page. Hypergeometric. Ah, finally, we get to a Poisson problem. Um, I don't want to deal with the graph, though. Can I remove the graph as a question? I don't think I can. Because I don't care about the graph. OK, I got one. Add that. All right, there you go. That's better. So I'm going to think there's going to be a save button somewhere. Update assignment. Because all that would have been silly if had I done it and then not updated. <laughs> all right. Much better. Save. So you guys may have to refresh it to get the the two problems that got added. Um, I didn't want that one. I wanted the view button. I hit the edit button. I probably should take this one out because it's kind of it's kind of silly. But all right, so um, here in number four, they have a binomial distribution. So it's binomial because there's two choices: that they either go to tet or they don't go to tet. All right, I'm hoping I pronounce that right, but it's only three letters. And I can't imagine any other way to pronounce it. So, um, but that doesn't mean I'm not pronouncing it wrong. Okay, so when we are doing this. We have, you know, they're going to ask, well, what are the variables? You know, the variable is, did they go to TET? How many, what can that take? Well, if there's 13 students, anywhere from nobody can go to all 13 can go. The probability of them going is 21%. So we would expect 21% of the 13 people to be there. Okay. And so to do that, it's just multiplication. So for the, um, the expected value, which is also the mean, OK, in a binomial distribution, it's just the number of things times the probability of them occurring. Uh, 
Sean, are you killing something? <laughs> I'm not no, sure who that is. No, no, no. <laughs> okay, so P is the probability of success. Q is the probability of failure. which is equal to 1 minus P. N is the number of trials. And X is the number of successes we're interested in. Okay, so there's four things that might show up in these, that are going to show up in these problems. Uh, P, the probability of success, it could be a decimal, it could be a, as a percent sign, it could be that they tell you that, you know, three out of a hundred, it could be in a fraction, it could be in a decimal, but it's going to be, there's going to have some probability of success. Q is the number of, I'm sorry, N is the number of trials that they're going to tell you, so they're going to say, okay, well, we flip a coin. All right, and um, what are you know? And we're going to flip the coin a hundred times. So now, when we're flipping a coin, uh, what are the options that you can have? Heads or tails? No. You would think that that would be the case. But there's a third option. I don't happen to have a coin on me, but um, the coin can land straight up. Yes, the coin can land straight up, and a nickel actually will do that one every six thousand tries. It's about a one in six thousand chance of a coin landing on its perfectly straight up. Um, they actually did. We're doing the math on what is the probab they've been doing working on the math and what is the probability of having a coin that will equally land heads tails or side so they're working on a three-sided coin um and um you know so it's a it's a cylinder but will have the the probability of the, that it lands on its side is equally likely as it will land on its heads or tails and so there's actually a, a whole they're sending them out and having them flip people having them flip they're asking people to work on the math to find um, uh, and then use uh, laser printers, uh, you know, to um, not laser printers, but, um, you know, the plastic printers to actually make the coins and try it. So there's all kinds of, but there's actually a study on this. Um, and the other thing that happens with coins is that um, one side is usually heavier than the other side. And that's really true in a, in a couple of coins. Like there's a New Zealand penny that's that that's true on, and um, one of the Euro coins. I don't remember which one it is, but uh, because the face is larger than the the obverse, uh, the obverse, which is the face, is is has more metal in it than the reverse, which is the back. So um, the tails. So it lent, tends to lend. Uh, head side down because it flips and that side is heavier. So that's also a case. Um, and if you spin a coin, it was more likely to land on heads than it is on uh, on those coins. It's more likely to land on heads than he heads up than tails down. So yeah, so the the weight of the coins aren't always perfect because they're not made to be. They weren't made to be fair coins. They were just made to be coins and then people said, oh, well, we're going to flip them. So um, coins don't necessarily have a 50-50 chance of landing on heads and tails, but like I said, they can also land on the side. So while we think it's random, my hair looks weird, um, it's really not. I'm going to shave too because I didn't shave all week. Um, I, shave, I shave like once every week or two because this is, this is as 
much as I get. It doesn't grow any more than this, but it looks silly. Uh, it just gets kind of wiry. Um, but on my screen, I can see that it's showing up, so I have to kind of get rid of it. Um, but so when we are dealing with flipping coins, we have to make sure that um, yeah, shaved once in the last. Yeah, but do you have a beard? I mean, there's a difference. I this is it. I <laughs> yeah. See, when I shave, this is all I get. I, I if I don't, it doesn't turn into anything. It just looks silly. So, I had shaved every three days. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, uh, it's like I didn't start shaving until I was forty. <laughs> I swear to swear to God, I, I think I shaved like once a year, like it was horrible. Um, I give my beards haircuts. Yeah, see, I don't have that. I don't. This is all I got. You know, like it's just sad. <laughs> but I get lots. Like I'm not gonna ever go bald because I like shave my head like all the like my hair like all the time, and it just like it doesn't get long. It gets bushy, so I look like this like weird mushroom thing you know and it's horrible i have i have horrible hair I, it's just don't but at least i'm never gonna go bald because it just my mother has like so much hair it's ridiculous and like it just keeps growing i i don't it's never gonna stop <laughs> that it is a plus that, that's where it all goes it comes up here i have like nothing anywhere like i'm like a naked mole rat i it with it's horrible i'm just a bald human being <laughs> I had to shave every day. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. At least I'm not balding. Uh, share my screen again. Did did I share my screen? Yes, I did. Okay. So so we have these as the pieces that have to be included for um, binomial distribution. They have to tell you these things because otherwise you can't do the work. And so that's kind of one of the clues as to whether it's a binomial distribution or a Poisson distribution um, because the Poisson distribution just tells you uh, the number of trials and how likely something is to occur. Like you're going to like one baby a year uh, has this. So like like a, a cat has a, a normal litter is and a, and a cat is 15 kittens. Um, obviously it's not 15 kittens, but that's the first number that popped into my head. So that, so there's no probability, there's no percentage of, a, of occurrence. It's just, here's the average thing. And then it, what's the probability of having a litter with seven kittens? And so you have only two pieces with the Poisson distribution, whereas in the binomial, you're gonna have three. So when we do these, I'll bring it back up, and I'll bring up my calculator. We are going to need to use the distribution tool, which is above the vars. So on your calculator, it's above vars, so it's second vars. This brings up our distributions, OK? And you see a whole bunch of things here, which we're going to get into eventually. This is chapter six and seven. This is, sorry, these top three are chapter six and seven. The next one is chapter, the next ones are chapter eight. Uh, the chi square, and I hate when people say, call it x square, because it, yes, it looks like an x, but it's a chi. Uh, that's chapter 11. The F statistic is chapter 13. And then we get down to the binomial and the Poisson. So A, B, C, and D. Those are the ones we care about. All right. Um, the other, the the top ten are all uh, continuous distributions, where these A through um, G, they don't even have hyper hyper yeah, geometric. These are the discrete distributions. So we're only dealing with binomial and Poisson. So those are the ones we're living with. Um, the PDF stands for one thing. So if you're looking for the probability, if you flip um, the coin a um, hundred times and you're wondering what's the probability of getting 47 heads, then you're going to use the PDF. If you're looking for at most, at least, less than, greater than, then you're going to use CDF. CDF stands for cumulative. cumulative. I keep hearing popping. I'm assuming that's text going. Um, chat. 
go back to chat. Come on. Uh, what is I see. Oh, so you have a, a newer calculator. Um, and so what that does is it, it says, if this is the probability, what is the chance of finding this many? Like, here's the probability, what's the chance of that happening? So we're not going to be dealing with the inverse binomial, luckily. But yeah, so if you have a newer, like, they keep adding things. So um, the 83s do not have inverse T. But the 84 plus silvers and so forth have inverse T. So, like, it's weird. Like, they have inverse norm, but they don't have the inverse T distribution. So, they keep adding stuff. And um, that's that. That's just how it works. They just as they as they make new calculators. They're like the only way to sell new calculators is, is to add something new. So you know, and justify the hundred and twenty dollar cost. Um, so that's what they do. And if you have an emulator, they're free, so it costs them nothing. So they, but they're just taking on the, the whatever the last thing is. So. But because you have a newer calculator, a newer version, you have the inverse binomial and you might even have the inverse plus I don't know um, I've never used it because like it just seems like a weird thing to have but I mean yeah you could ask well what's the um, I have you know the probability is this the binomial distribution is this this was the count how many things of that occurred um, so the list is just going to be all of the values including zero uh, whenever they ask for the distribution it's just going to be, um, in this case, for binomial, it's B. And for Poisson, it's P, like B for binomial, P for Poisson. Um, but as you get, they could ask for, they're eventually going to ask, we're going to have chi-square, and we're going to have normal, and we're going to have T distribution, and we're going to have, um, they're building my fence out back, so I'm just making sure, checking on how it's progressing. Uh, we're going to have the F distribution. We're going to have, so there's, they're just going to ask, X is following what distribution? That's all this is. Um, and like eventually they get to the ones that have dropped down. So like if I get to the P1 here, it has a drop down menu. And so is it hypergeometric? Is it binomial? Is it Poisson? Or is it geometric? So um, those are the options that you could have for this chapter. Go back to four. Okay, um, so then it's what is the number of tries and then what is the probability of success? So this is just, and so each each thing here has its own graph. Uh, as the, the probability of success changes, the graph changes. As the number of things change, the graph changes. And as this number gets closer and closer to infinity, the binomial distribution starts to look normal. So, and, and, you know, and this, so that's kind of a, a nice thing, especially uh, as we get to bigger numbers, the normal distribution is just much easier. So people like that. Um, but we can use this here to, we can, we can use the normal distribution to approximate the binomial distribution as n gets in, infinitely big. So here they're asking us um, if we have, 13 people and 21% of them are going, how many people should we expect to be there? Well, it's just 13 times 21%, 21 divided by 100 or 0 0.21, whichever makes you happy. And so we're going to have to round this because two is less, obviously a lot less than 21%. Three is a little bit more, but it's closer. So we round to the nearest whole number because obviously these are people. And while this is the average we would expect, we would expect 2.7 of this group to show up. That seems kind of like a weird value. Um, so that's why they're rounding it to the next whole number. They're rounding it up. They're rounding, uh, the, they're rounding the value. But if I had said that, um, you know, the average size family has 2.7 kids, well, 
that's you know out of everybody even though we have half kids like they're not going to round that they, i mean they could say three but it's you know re they want to go with the mean and so um i don't know why they would they would probably be median would be better but uh that's what they're using you know, when they talk about average because people understand average Um, what is the probability that at most three students go? So now, to like I said, to do this probability, we have to go to distributions, which is second vars. And because this says at most, that means it's cumulative. We're going to add them all up. We could do the PDF distribution. And there's a couple of cool things that you can do. Uh, trials is... 13. The chance of success is 0.21. If you have an older calculator, don't worry about it. Um, and then here we could. Here is the number that we're interested. In. So I could do zero, and then one, and then two, and then three. Or I could just hit enter and leave it blank. If you have the old calculators, it's going to do the same thing. It has the n, and then the p, and then the x. And if I hit enter. It's going to give me all of the values. So the probability of zero people showing up is this. The probability of one person showing up is this. The probability of two people showing up is this. The probability of three people showing up is that. Four, five, exactly four, exactly five, exactly six, exactly seven, all the way up to 13. So that's, and then notice here that I get a two. Well, that doesn't make any sense because probabilities have to be less than uh, one, right? bigger between zero and one. And so what happens is that that two tells me that there's an exponent and that there's four decimal places we have to move that. So we have to move this decimal place, four, decimal point four places, so it's point zero, 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 two. And they're just trying to get more precision in the values, that's all. And so it keeps going on. But so this will show you the probability of each thing. So if you ever need to make a probability distribution, you can do that and it will give you all of the values. But because we were looking at, let me go back. If I was looking for exactly one thing and it keeps the information in there, this is exactly three. And I plug that. This would tell me the probability of exactly three people. But I want at most three people. So I want zero, one, two, or three. So I'd have to either do this a bunch of times and add them up. But I'm lazy, as all mathematicians are. That's why there's a big dispute about whether it's math or maths. Because, I mean, that's, there's that whole extra S at the end. And, and so American mathematicians hate calling it maths. So this can only do most. This can only do this number or less. We don't have a uh, more than. Like we don't have, we can't, if we were trying to do at least, we still have to figure out at mo, uh, you know, more than, less than, up to that value. So we have to do less than. And then we have to subtract that value from one because it doesn't have that capability. Newer, the, the um, I don't remember who it was that had the inverse. You might actually have that um, because it was, again, it was built into later versions where you can ask, it's going to ask you, is it left or right? And so you're going to just tell it, well, I'm on looking on the right side. It'll actually add up the other side for you. Uh, Yes, okay, so if you have, this is because you have the older calculator. So I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like. Oops, wrong button. So you get the thing that says binomial parenthesis. You still, have, you then have to print it. Here, I'm going to go to my um, this screen. So if you have that, you're gonna t you're, you'll have the binome, you know, PDF or CDF, whichever it is. It's the same thing, and you'll have that parenthesis. You have to put in n, 
which is the number of things, a comma, P, which is the decimal probability of success, and X, the number that we're interested in. So less this number or less this exactly this number if it's by a PDF. So you're going to be putting those three values in and then hit enter, which is what the calculator does automatically from the table. Here, I'm going to clear it. Mine does that too. It says binomial CDF parenthesis, and then I had to put, then it puts in the n value, how many things there are, the probability of success, and what number are we interested in. So yeah, it, it, it th this is the 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 problem with the you know, requiring people to have uh, by the TI eighty three is that it updates and so then they like i said they've added new things and um you, we have people who have you know because they don't die I, they 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 will as long as you don't let the batteries rot they will stay working forever <laughs> um i just let my son borrow one that i've had for like um i don't know 10 years <laughs> I, I've had one. I still have the one I bought when I started um, first doing my student teaching at, in high school, which was in 1996. So I still have it. Um, it's in my it's in my desk at at the high school. Um, it's I have the it's the silver it's the silver the 84 83 plus silver edition. So it it's it's clear. <laughs> Um, because why not? Um, but yeah, so I've, I've had that forever. Like that was like, and it was like $90 then it's still 90. It, it hasn't gone down in price ever. It's still $90. They, oh, thanks. Nick. And your beard, you still had the beard though. That was the other thing. It's like that you, you were you at six years old. You still had that beard. <laughs> Yes, quite true. <laughs> so um, I don't want to say anything. <laughs> we're the same. You're, yeah, I know you're older than me, there, there Sean. So it, it's that's the only saving grace I have. Uh, I, I the, the the high school I work. I actually have a shirt that's older than one of the teachers. But I still wear. <laughs> Like it's not a concert T-shirt; it's a button-down shirt that it's older than 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 one of the teachers that that's in my pod. Um, she's 26. <laughs> so I was like, I'm like, I have clothes older than you, and it, like. Yeah, so, no, I know that. Though. So that that just makes me feel like really old, um, you know. And it's not like it like. It's it's still good. It's not even worn out. I don't. It, so I just why throw it away? It's still it, it's now big on me again. But um, it was tight for a while, and then I started losing weight. I've lost like 40 pounds so uh, since last year, so I can fit into it again. <laughs> so the probability of I it be able to get into my dress screens. Yeah. So. Now, like like my wife has lost like 95 pounds since last year. So she's like. She's like everything. She had to basically take all of the clothes she had and throw them away, because she's like, they don't fit me anymore. I have to get new stuff. Um. So, right here, uh, I was, so the, at most three students. So we had the. I'll bring it back. So the number of students there were, the probability of success. And the number that we're interested in at most three, that gives us this decimal. And then again, we have to round to four places. So that's why we have to, it goes up. This one says more than two students. So because it's more than, and your calculator only does less than, you're still going to do the binomial PDF. I'm sorry, CDF. Yeah. 
but it is interested in less than two, less than three, less, uh, sorry, more than two. So that means we have three, four, five, six, dot, 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 all the way up to 13. They want to know what's the probability of these things occurring. Well, your calculator, except for the people with the really, really new ones, doesn't do that. It can only tell us two or less. So I can, I can look at zero, one, and two. And I could find those. I could find the probability of this thing occurring, subtract it from one, you know, the probability of this. And then I'm going to get a value. We'll call it x. Actually, we'll, I guess we'll call it x. And so the probability of this thing occurring is going to be 1 minus x. Or we'll call this the p of x, I guess. And then this is 1 minus p of x. Or q. OK, so we have to have look up this on our calculator. So I'm going to tell I'm still going to have 13 things. I'm still going to have a probability of success of 0.21. And I'm interested in 0, 1, or 2. So I'm going to go all the way up to 2, find that probability. So I can just do it on, if, if you do second enter, it brings back the previous equation, previous problem, and then you can just edit it. So it still has, it's still CDF, it still has the number of people, it still has the probability, and I just changed it from a three to a two. So the probability of this occurring is 0.46529. There, that's better. 0.46529. Nine. So the probability of this occurring is one minus that. So if I just do minus one and ignore the negative sign, I get five, four, three, seven, zero. So point five, four, I'm sorry, five, three, four, seven, zero. So I'm going to round and take that to four decimal places. And so this is my answer. So the probability of getting three or more is 53%. Even though the probability of, um, you know, there's only 21% chance of a person going because I have all, you know, these things that adds up to, and my expected value is only, uh, was only, two, three, I don't remember what it was now. Um, oh, two points that was three. So therefore, but like the probability of more, three or more happening is, is still over 50%, even though the probability of one person go, each individual person going is 21. So, which seems kind of counterintuitive that, that that probability is actually fairly large considering the probability of every individual person going is small but like i said the probability of each person going like the probability of 13 people going is tiny but the probability of three people going is big and so you're you keep adding those things up because our expected value is three so having three people show up is actually a fairly decent probability and then goes from and then going from there um five here is really just the same thing except all they're asking is what is the expected value well the expected number is just the average so the chance of winning is this they're playing um this many games the these two red numbers are, are pointless they're just telling you how they got that this number 
because they in 13 years they've won 380 games out of 1,036. So that's where this number comes from. If you play 12 games, how many should you win? And you should win four and a half because they just multiply those two numbers together. Um, this one is always hard. I probably should just take this one out because it confuses people way too much. Um, but uh, I'm going to leave it in there because it confuses people way too much, and um, I think I need to explain it. So um, a student takes a 10-question true-false quiz. All right, you didn't study, so you're just guessing. It's kind of like you know how Sean takes tests normally. He just guesses and hopes. Oh, thanks. So hopes the gods, you know, smile down on him that day, and um, he knows that he's got a bunch of chances of taking it. So he can narrow down his wrong answers by, you know, taking it more than once. Right, Sean? <laughs> Anytime. That's why. That's why I have you here for comic relief. Um, so, what is the probability that a student passes the test? Why can't I make this bigger? Okay. Knowing that you need to get at least four questions correct. It's a really strange way to pass the test. That a 40 is a passing grade, but. Uh, so we can find out um, the probability of getting a 40 or less, or a 30 or less. We can probably we can find out the chance that the student fails the test. All right. We can't calculate the, on our calculators the probability that he passes the test. All right. Because all we can look at is well, if he's Getting 40 questions out of 10, all right, that means he got four right or more. All right, we can on our calculator can count can calculate less, so we can calculate that he got zero right, one right, two right, and three right. Or we can calculate that individually that, that he got four through 10 right and add those up. But it doesn't have the the capabilities to do the less than. So it's still the same process. Calculate the chance of him getting them wrong. So I'll just from 4 to 10. And from 0 to 3. So this is 10 questions. You have a 50-50 chance of getting them correct. And we are interested in the chance of getting less than three. So it's still going to be this binomial CDF. And it stores 20 equations in your calculator. So you can go back 20 program, no, 20 things. So this is 10 right with a 50% chance of success. And we are interested in him getting three or less right. So the chance of him failing is 17.19. Okay, the chance of him passing is one minus that. I just didn't feel like writing it that way. I mean, I could have said, here, let me, I'll, I'll do it correctly. And it would be one minus, and then to bring the answer back. So second entry brings back the, the, the single problem. Second negative brings back the answer. So you can stick it into the, your calculator wherever you want. And so instead of getting a negative value, I get a positive value. So it's, the chance of passing a true for true false quiz if you only need to get four or more correct is a 0.8281 depending on how many decimal places they need 
So you have a really good chance of passing. However, in the real world, um, passing is a 70. So the chance of getting six wrong on a, on a true false quiz. This is your chance of failing a, a true false quiz <laughs> in most in, in the real world is if you haven't studied and so therefore the chance of passing is 17 you have a 70 percent chance of actually passing a true false quiz if you don't know anything so you directing that at me no i'm just directing that in general in in the real world no that wasn't directing at anybody <laughs> It, Nick will take the Nick. Nick's a betting man. He'll take the odds of, of passing his test. If he, uh, he'll 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 sleep late, you know, drink heavily, sleep late, and come and take the true false quiz without without any problems. He's got a 70% chance of, of passing. He's good for it. I like that. <laughs> a man with a plan. <laughs> so. You know me. <laughs> so this, but this is so. Like I said. You know, that's how you're going to calculate that problem is you have to calculate the chance of not passing the test and then subtracting it from one and you'll find out the chance of actually passing it. Same thing with this. This is just another binomial distribution. Um, the big thing is that they tell you that 60% of the fencers use foils. So they want to know what's the per percent of people that do not use foils. So if this is how many that use it. 40% don't use it, and that's your success rate. Okay, so uh, number eight is just, again, a um, expected value test problem. So they give you the percentages of things occurring, you know, for each type of investment. So you just have to fill them into the table, multiply the value times the probability of that happening. That's going to give you this. And then they ask you, um, what are the expected values of those? So you're just going to add them all up. And then from there, it's going to ask you, well, which one is the safest bet? And then the safest bet is the one that where you lose your chance of losing your money is lowest, which is the riskiest. That's the chance where you're, you're um, you have the greatest chance of losing money. So your your rest your chance of losing is the highest, and which has the best return? So the, that's going to be the one with the highest expected value, which is from part B. You're going to look here and go, oh, that's the highest expected value. It'll be different from everybody. So um, it's one of those three things. But so that's what um, eight is. And then nine has to do with the Poisson distribution. So the Poisson distribution, like I said, only tells you um, the probability, that, like um, the average number of things that are ha that happen. Um, so whatever it is, um, the like I said, it could be the size of a litter of, for cats. It could be uh, the um, number of cars that drive by your house in an hour. It could be uh, the um, chance of you know, getting a disease, like the average, the, the average number of people who get a disease is this. Uh, the average number, they're always going to tell you the average number of calls a, a center gets in an hour is three. The average number of this thing happening is a number, and it doesn't have to be a whole number. And the time periods, it has to be over a time period. And then they don't have to be the same time periods when that they're comparing. So if they tell you that the average number of cars that drives by my house uh, per hour is 12, what is the probability of getting 500 cars driving by my house in a day or in a week? You know, so you then have to turn hours into weeks. You know, so you have to, you'll have to convert the 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 average thing that they've given you 
in one time period into the average number of things that happen into the other time period. So they can change the time periods. So they don't have to, when they're talking about them, they don't have to be the same. So this one's probably the same because they're talking about lifetime. Um, and very seldom do people get to live more than one lifetime. Um, but that's, you know, so this one's probably not going to change. But if I had had, um, so the, like I said, the average number of cars driving by my house per hour is 15. Uh, what is the chance of having um, more than 100 cars travel by my house in a day? Well, actually, that's pretty low. Uh, there's more than, uh, so here, I'm going to change this to five cars. There. All right. So we then have to say, turn this into cars per day. So I'd have to multiply hours, there's 24 hours in a day, so I'm going to have to multiply this by 24. Which is 120 cars per day. So if I get 120 cars per day, the chance of me getting more than 100, I can now find that out. All right, and so to do that again, I do Poisson. And because it's more than uh, greater than 100 cars per day, I'm going to do the Poisson CDF, which again means cumulative. It means I've added up all the things. And if you have a tape, if you have this one, it's going to ask for the lambda. The lambda is just this. This is lambda. So I have 120. Now, um, remember, this only does that number or less. So if I'm looking for more than 100 cars, I would use 100. If I was, use, if I was looking for at least 100 cars, I would have to use 99. Because this more than 100 really means 100 or like 101, 102, 103, I would use 100. Am I in a bowling alley? Uh, So if I have more, if I have greater than or equal to, I'm going to have to use 99 because that 100 is included in the, the things that I'm interested in. If I'm using for looking for more than 100, that really means at least 101. So I'm going to use the 100. All right. And those are the two things you have to get in. in like, and it changes from um, the discrete. Uh, probabilities to the continuous probabilities because continuous probabilities at least and more than are the same thing they're 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 more than a hundred is a hundred because really it's a hundred point zero 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 through infinity one which rarely rounds which is really a hundred so there is no like next number you actually use that number because um, you can't, the number, the, the, the increment is so small that it's not countable. Like we can't measure it. So it, it just becomes that value. But in this case, I'm looking for, you know, I was only looking for more than 100. So I'm going to have to use 99 cars. Why am I in finance? So 120, oh, number lock is off, that's why. I don't know how number lock got turned off, but.
Oh, because I hadn't been using it yet. That's why. And 99. And then I paste. And again, for those of you who have the older calculator, it's going to say Poisson PDF or Poisson CDF parenthesis. And then you're doing the same thing. You're just putting in lambda. You know, the average number of things that happen and the X that we're interested in. So it's. where lambda is just the average, all right? And then when I hit enter, this is gonna tell me the probability of having less than 100, car, 100 cars, 99 cars or less. So my probability of having 100 cars or more is one minus that. And so there's a 97% chance of 100 or more cars going by my house every day. And it, I think it's probably true. <laughs> I get lots of cars in front of us. This, this is why my kids can't ride a bike. They're teenagers and have no idea how to ride bikes because there's nowhere to ride them. All right. Um, so what is x? x in this case is, um, suppose one woman, Japanese woman is randomly chosen. What is the probability of? Uh, um, what is the number of X is just the number of children she has in her lifetime. And the values can go from zero to infinity because you could have as many children as you need to. I, I mean, look at the Dugars, right? You know, or uh, what's the new one on TV? Um, doubling down with the Dorigos. And they keep having twins and triplets and all that stuff. You know, so you can have lots and lots and lots of kids. And they used to. They used to have lots and lots and lots of kids. All right. So the distribution on this is the Poisson. Okay. And all they ask for is just the lambda, the only value they've given you. All right. Um, so that's just a Poisson with this value. And find the probability that she has no children. Well, all right. Second. Vars, no twilt children means zero, exactly zero children. So that's a PDF. So we had 1.33 and zero. And so in this case, I have Poisson PDF for point, and I'm finding that one point, and there's a 26.45 percent chance of her having no children in her life. What's the probability that she has fewer children than the average? Well, that's going to be, if this is the average is 1.33, less than that is going to be, we can do, is CDF. And again, they're going to, they can only have um, whole numbers. So zero and one are the only choices. So less, so we're going to add up the probability that it's zero and one. So that's why this is going to be a, this would be a one. If you have 2.66, it would be two. If you had 2.89, it would still be two. If you have 3.001, it would be three. So whatever they take the average, you have to take the number the whole number that's less than that. And so there's a 60% chance that she has zero or one kids. And what's the probability that she has uh, more than the average? Well, this is easy because we can just add those, we can just subtract those two. Like we can subtract this from one, but it could have been any number more than it would take you know that number and then um 
we would have to find the less than part, but they've already they've made it easy for us. So this is just going to be one minus our answer because we've already solved for that part, and we get this value. But remember, whatever thing is, we always if it's more than, we have to then look at this and decide more than five would be. We're going to use five as our as our um, in our CDF and then subtract from 100. If it had at least five, then we would have to use one less than that. So if they said at least the average, well, again, we have to look to see, well, where is the number that's less than that average? Because these are whole numbers that we have to deal with and they're using decimals. So if the average you know, number of kids in a household was, uh, was 3.6, well, at least the average would be three or less, and then the the we because then we'd be counting four or more, four on to infinity. All right. So we have to look to see what are what it is that we're dealing with when they're asking us at more than and less than, and at most and at least. Okay. So those are everything. Like I said, I think I skipped a couple of problems just because we've done a couple of them and I just wanted you to have some fun with doing them on your own. Um, any, let me bring, just bring up the course here and the calendar. Oh, I'm still in the, I, oh, did I drop out of the class? No. All right. Good. I want to, I don't want, no, I don't want that. I want, where is, ah! oh yeah, look for that. I'm like, where is the thing? Where's the thing with the thing? So calendar. Um, we are here. Oh, so there's a test. Is that right? No, that can't be right. Because we're only on chapter four right now. I think this is off a week. This. <laughs> Cut. There. That's where we are. Because we're working on chapter four right now. So um, the test is not. Is that right? Chapter three homework is due tomorrow. Yeah. So you, the, the test will open up here. Uh, tomorrow, and then you'll have all week to, to work on it. Um, yeah, so um, I up because I added those problems after everybody probably logged in. If you log back out or refresh, it should they should come back. Like you have to close the homework and then open it back up, and those should pop up because it's weird I had them before in a previous I think I had them in the, but I think it must have copied from the wrong chap from the wrong semester because I know I've had them before I had them last semester and they were in there so I must have copied from the wrong semester when I made the course um, so the test is not due until next uh, Monday not December, tomorrow uh, October 11th right uh, I don't know. Um, here, I'll bring up the web sign. Let's see. Future things. I can it'll be there in the future. In the future, things are awesome. Uh, the 12th, yes. And they should open up. Um, test is available on the 4th, which is tomorrow, correct? Yes. My math, if, I, if my math is correct, and today is the 3rd, yeah. the 4th should be tomorrow. So it'll open up tomorrow, 
you'll have a week and a day to do it. Um, uh, you can do each question three times. I originally, when I set it up, I originally thought it meant that I could do the eat the the test a couple of times, but it's each question yeah. individually. So. Um, I'm just answering my wife. Uh, they, uh, so, um, so yeah, so you'll you can do each question three times uh, before, and it will take. Obviously, if if you get it right, you get it right. Um, I think, or is it two times? Hold on. I mean, just before I, before I say three and then it's two, I don't remember. I think it's two. Might be two times. Um, that doesn't bring me to it. I mean, my assignments. And so it's just on chapters two and three. You're not listening. You're not, I'm, not, you're, I'm not listening. You're right. Default, that doesn't help me. Um, view settings. Three times. OK, so each question you can do three times. Um, it says new or changed question parts can be submitted individually. Um, use student's best score for each question part. So obviously, if you get it right, that's the best part, best score. If you get it wrong, that's the worst score, because um, I think there's, only, there's no in between. Um, so each part of each question. It's a binomial question, distribution is what you're saying. Yes. Yes. It is either right or wrong. <laughs> I'm like, huh? Yes. Uh, yeah. So it might say seven, um, but there are nine now. Um, so there's no, I, I, um, you're not showing me any work because most of the work you're going to do is on the calculator anyway. Um, and it will grade it. You'll know if you got it right or you can submit it. You'll, it'll tell you right away if you got it right or wrong. Um, so the questions that have two multiple choice parts, you should get all correct. The ones that have three, four multiple choice parts, there's a, you know, still a one chance that you're not, if you, if you get it wrong, choose a different answer the next time. <coughs> You have, and you have three ties. So you can still get the problem wrong, but you should do really well on the multiple choice ones. OK? Um, it's, the, it's the ones we have to fill in the values that you might you know, have a problem because those, there's infinite answers, and you know, only one is correct. Um, and so all of them is multiple choice Not all of them. There, they, there are, like, it's going to ask you, what is the mean? So like it's and there's no multiple choice in that it's gonna you're gonna have to type in what the value is. Oh okay. You know there'll there'll be a, lo a bunch of multiple choice ones, but like a bunch of them are what is you know this value? What is that? What is the mean? What's the median? What's the mode? So you'll have to put those in. What's the standard deviation? What is the you know sample size? What is you know like in this chapter here, it's going to ask you what's the probability of success of, of finding less than three kittens? You know. So you'll have, but there will also be multiple choice questions. Like, what are these sample? Uh, what are the number of things that we could have? You know. So like, there's going to be both parts, both in there. It's not, and um, no, that's not what I was looking for. There's 25 questions. There's um. Yeah. Where's the thing? Oh, there's here. There's um, different pools. You get to swim in different pools. So there's nine. There's 21 questions. You're taking nine from this one, six from eight from this one, two from this one. So there's different parts, like for the different chapters. Um, and there's so it's pulling questions from each part of those chapters. So I made sure that it covers everything except for chapter one. Uh, so it's just chapters two and three. 
Um, and don't look at these these times are are ridiculous on some of these things. Yes, it says um, up to 72 minutes, and like so, if I click on a question, it says that this one is 26 minutes long. It's really not, but I don't know where like where some of these numbers come from. It's like notice most of them are, you know from three to six minutes and then there's these two really long ones and I don't think that that's the case on those like I it just comes up with these weird numbers sometimes um, so uh, you know here there's nine questions most of them are one or two minutes and then this one's 18 so I'm pretty sure it doesn't take 18 minutes to do that one it's probably maybe five minutes like but I don't think any of these are going to take you 20 minutes to do but like worst case scenario it says 113 minutes so have two hours set aside where you're like kids shut up and leave me alone I'm taking a test <laughs> um, you know uh, but it's not timed so it's not like you know um, there's I, there's no time limit on these, you know. So you, I don't think you you can close it and come back to it. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not going to say you can or you can't, but I'm guessing you can't. Um, having not t actually taken the test, I don't know. And like my view of it is always in, is in being different than everybody else's because being the teacher, I don't get to just play and take the test. Um, Sean, you've actually taken you've taken the have you. Do you remember if they like let you back in and like if you've gone through half of it, does it let you come back in and finish the other half? Yeah, I believe it does. Okay, so from experience, like you can find out, I guess you know. But you know, Sean says you can, and he I know he's done it before, so I'm gonna guess that's the case. But notice there's nothing in here that tells me you know about that. You can use the book. See the hints after one submission, you can use the book. Um, you can practice other questions. It just doesn't show you the answers or how to solve them. It just tells you, did you get it right or wrong? OK, so if you're like, gee, I don't remember how to do this. I've answered this question twice. Look it up, you know, go through, you know, do the practice, pro do a practice problem that is similar and then try the last time. So those are well, my suggestions. Honestly, if I'm not mistaken, you can you get multiple tries. Um, and once you open it, it, yep. it, 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 it it's open. Right. And so it doesn't it doesn't close until you submit everything. Is that the, the case? Yeah. Like, and, I, and I think it's one question at a time too, isn't it? Yeah. So, um, so I mean, I you, typically just roll the dice on those types of situations. Well, yeah, I, I'm, and I'm proud of you. You know, you're, you're, you know, because you have that cool beard. You know, um, <laughs> like I was just damn right. Uh, where was the? Um, and you probably use Old Spice. I, uh, I do not. Well, you should, because. <laughs> Because I'm I'm doing for my web class, like they're talking about brands, and like this is one of the things I have to show them. The commercials are entertaining, though. <laughs> <laughs> so that could be you. Um, yeah, but like, I don't know. But uh, it, it was like, I have to show this in class? Uh, oh, OK. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. But like, you know, like the beard thing, it just kind of, that, that should be me, but it's not me. <laughs> um, so. Does anybody have any other questions? Because it's like quarter, of, it's like eleven o'clock, and I like these do, like I know it says till twelve, but like usually this time I would let people work on stuff and I would wander around, but I can't really go to your houses, because um, that's creepy. 
And um, I probably can't, I don't know where you all live, so that, which is probably a good thing. And I'd have to knock on your door and I would only get to one house by the time I, you know, it was done. So um, like this is when I would say, say, make sure you email me if you have questions. Um, I did get something about the, um, uh, how to handful difficult call it now, where, uh, tutoring services. So um, I don't have a way to forward this to everybody, I don't think, because I don't have, um, hold on, actually I can, I can put this in email through school, through Blackboard. So I'm gonna mail this to all of you, so it's gonna go to your school email. Um, this is just about uh, the, um, the tutoring center. Um, actually, I'll just make it an announcement, so uh, yeah. tools. Um, announcements, create announcement. Uh, stuff. I don't even know. If, I'm assuming it's ours, but it could be anything in there. So I'm just submitting. I'm just putting this in. I will send it to your emails. That way you can, you don't have to uh, look at it through announcements because I don't even have a button to it, but it's going to your school email. Um, so it has all the links for stuff. Um, if you, because everything is being done um, remotely. So you need to make a, an appointment for them for online tutoring. Um, and so here's the links for all that stuff and information um, and then ramp up, which we're not using. So, um, but so we can, you know, so you can contact them if you have questions that you, you know, contacting me, like uh, you can't do. All right, so um, if there's nothing else, I am going to stop recording because, uh, stop recording. I mean, I have I'm like going. a non-math question. Shoot. Just curiosity. I think you probably answered this week one. But when you're okay. in that like 